The whole thing's ridiculous. Let's uh let's go ahead and dive into the last topic of the day. Let's talk about Conor McGregor. He is the preeminent fighter in all of combat sports, right? I, I think we can both agree on that. He is the most hyped, most watched, most uh, notorious. I mean, he is the notorious. Uh, That's his nickname and everything. We'll talk about two different topics with him today. Uh, first off, and we're, we're going to tie it into one video for those that are, that are watching. Conor McGregor, one, told Dana White a couple of days ago he wants in on Fight Island. So he had a couple of questions from Dana. Uh, and, and Dana was doing an interview with, uh, let's see, with Robbie Fox from Barstool Sports. Connor, uh, let's see, Dana said, this is kind of right here. He's asking me, what date can I do on Fight Island, and will there be fans? He said, we're not talking about a specific opponent, but he wants to fight. And two, it sounds like he wants to fight in June. He's asking if there would be fans there. There would not be fans, and the fight would either be mid-June or the end of June, but Connor wants to fight. So, here's the deal. We know that Connor is ready to get back in the ring. He has been training. Like, that's been documented. He, he is ready for a fight when it's time to go. He wants fans, and my question is, would it be smart of the UFC to do a Conor McGregor pay-per-view right now? Like, it, well, not right now, but in June, so a month and a half from now, if it's mid to late June. Would it be smart of them to do a pay-per-view with no fans for a Conor McGregor fight? Because any fight that he does is going to have a gate of at least $16 million. Would a pay-per-view be able to outdo that, do you think? Yes. I think so, too. I don't think the oh, fans they do matter. Massive, they do massive pay-per-views when Connor shows up. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone it's he's disgusting. done. Once again, TV money dwarfs, dwarfs ticket money. Well, now, this is it, because we're talking about pay-per-view at this point. Pay-per-view money for Conor McGregor dwarfs ticket sales. I, I think you're right. I think because you're, right. you're not doing those in football arenas with a hundred thousand people in them. Now I don't you're think doing you those even in regular arenas with twenty thousand. Maybe you pack it with twenty four on yeah. the floor. I mean, the last one, Come the on. one what he are you did having against to pay those folks against Donald Cerrone against Cowboy. You do a million pay per views at seven seventy bucks a pop. That's a seventy million dollars. Yes, that's it's massive. And and he did sixteen if, something if million on the game. Five hundred bucks. You're not getting close to that at. Twenty four thousand bucks is twelve million dollars. Yeah, and you're not selling every ticket for twenty for five for five hundred bucks. You're just not. Michael jumps in on the last topic. He said, "If you're not willing to take the risk in September, when would you take the risk? It's like a vaccine is the yeah. only thing that will make everyone comfortable." I'm on the side of doing college football in September. I think it's going to ultimately come down to risk reward. I think the the risk for the southern schools and for the East Coast schools is not as big as it would be out west and in the Northeast. Bottom line, I think the Midwest is going to play. I think the Big 12 is going to play. I think the SEC is going to play. I think, you know, and and we are going to have some teams that don't play this year. And it sucks, but it is what it is. Somebody's going to have to get that uh, the TV money, and the conferences are going to distribute it evenly regardless. I was going to say, I, I, if the Big 10 plays without Rutgers, Rutgers will get their share. Yeah, Rutgers will still get, and it may not be Rutgers, as much, but Rutgers it will, will still be something. Share. Yeah, they will. They will still get money, and I, I think don't even know okay that it that. wouldn't be that much if they've got a deal where it's split twelve ways evenly. Then I think they'll get it. Would well, be it'd be fourteen, but fourteen, whatever yeah. it is, whatever it is, however many teams they got. Uh, let's see. My uh, McKinnon said, especially if sporting events are still not in operation, pay per view would be dozens, if not hundreds, of millions. Uh, McGregor is one of the only household names in UFC, and Dana would be a fool not to capitalize on it. I think we're gonna see this weekend with UFC two forty nine, and we're gonna have our little preview of that. Um, we're, we're going to talk about that tomorrow and whatnot. But if if Tony Ferguson, who typically doesn't do more than three hundred thousand, and Justin Gaethje, who is not a household name yet but is a very exciting fighter, those two, and then Henry uh, Cejudo and, uh, and whoever else, uh, Dominic Cruz, and and whatever else, if if all of these guys can put together a pay per view that does well over a million, then yes, Connor doing a pay per view in June would do three million easily. Easily. It wouldn't even be close. Um, ben said, I don't understand the East-West difference. Uh, it, there's not a big difference. It's just this thing is more prevalent in some places than it's not. You know? I mean, it just is what it is. A lot of people live on the West Coast. A lot of people live in the Northeast on top of one another. And those are hot spots. The rest, the rest of the country, people don't live on top of one another. This thing is not that bad. You got it. 
Uh, it's Michael really said, bad where people live on top of one another. That's, Michael said, uh, sorry, Gary, didn't mean to take the show off track. Slow typer. It's all good. Hey, you jump in here whenever you want to. Uh, Matt said, every fan there gets his whiskey, which can kill anything, even the Rona. And then Michael said, politics are a lot different, too. Yeah, East and, uh, and Northeast, well, West Coast and Northeast, yeah, politics are a lot different than they are the rest of the country. So, uh, this all has to do with governors and whether or not states are shut down, et cetera. Back to McGregor, I, yes, I think it would be a fantastic idea to go ahead. And you don't even have to have him against a big-time, big-name opponent. It can be against somebody that is intriguing, but it doesn't have to be the big-time money just fight. just need Connor's name on it. Yes, that's all you need. Um, I mean, 100%. Like, you just, that's all you need. Uh, ben said, not many people live in Pullman, Washington. Yes, I understand that. But, like, Seattle is different, and it just depends on the governors in these states. Back to that. Uh, now, the other side of this Conor McGregor thing. He came out today with a tweet just about 30 minutes before you and I started planning the show, and he said, I accept your challenge, Oscar De La Hoya. Now, I had no idea what the hell was going on with this. Uh, it, did you know anything about this before I sent it to you? I, uh, I figured, because there, nobody knew what was going on. Um, but it, you see this bizarre tweet that just comes out of the clouds, right? And you're like, what in the world did Oscar De La Hoya do at this point? You know, whatever. Well, the State of Combat podcast, which I typically keep up with, but my God, there's so many podcasts, and I can't keep up with all of them at the same time. So, uh, Michael already jumps in. He said he kicks De La Hoya's ass. Yeah. Um, Oscar De La Hoya on the State of Combat podcast said if he boxed Conor McGregor, he would beat him in less than two rounds. One thing about me, he said, I went for the kill always. Look, Conor McGregor, I love him in the octagon. I respect him. I watch him all the time. But the boxing, or the boxing ring is a whole different story. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya has not KO'd a single person in 15 years. This man is old. One, first question, would you pay to see Oscar De La Hoya and Conor McGregor in a boxing ring? 1,000%. I would pay it 100 times over than seeing him fight Mayweather because Mayweather fights are boring as hell. Yeah. De La Hoya fights are amazing. Now, they, they used to be. But he hadn't fought in forever. So, like, I'm with you. But I True. also think... But I can only go on... Listen, he ain't going to run from him. No, not at all. Uh, look, it so was... So even if Connor beats his ass, is that not still fun? It No, it's 100% fun. It's Okay, awesome. somebody's going to get their ass whipped in this fight. De La Hoya has not... There, there is no touchy, touchy, run away, touchy, touchy, run away no. for 12 rounds. It's haymakers. And, and yeah, this is going to be somebody's getting hit in the face. Oh yeah, somebody's going to get hit about the head. De La Hoya last knocked somebody out in 1997. Okay, for him That's, to come out and say this no. is just absurd. And this is just somebody talking smack for the sake of talking smack. This is creating content. If this it, is whatever if it gets us a fight that is interesting and cool, then I'm okay. I would love to watch Connor fight more. If I get it in the octagon, if I get it in a boxing ring. I don't care. It doesn't I matter. I like watching Connor fight. I just want him to fight somebody who will actually fight him. Yes. That's my problem with Mayweather. The greatest fighter in the history of the sport is actually the is greatest Dodger. Of, he just runs away. And while he's boxing and it's all technically right and sound and perfect and flawless, it's boring. Who the shit cares? Yeah. Michael said De La Hoya needs to stay in those high heels and shut up. Uh, and then Matt said, well, De La Hoya wears fishnets. Uh, <laughs> boy, everybody running in on that. McKinnon said, McGregor gave a shitload to uh, Mayweather in the ring, and I think he's probably giving everything De La Hoya wants and more. Yes, McGregor would destroy, destroy De La Hoya right now. Uh, maybe in his prime? I'll, I'll, listen, I'm going to reserve judgment, and if it happens, then I'll make a wager one way or another. But but I'm I'm not just believing that Connor would walk in the door and beat the hell out of him. That, it, Oscar De La Hoya is old, man. I, I got to look this up I now. agree. I understand. I'm just telling you. I don't. Let's see. Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, I, I, I gotta, watched Mayweather try to fight uh, 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 and, and, and Connor fight, okay? Uh, De La Hoya is 47 years old. He couldn't, he couldn't hit him. He just couldn't connect. And I know that Mayweather is a lot better than De La Hoya at avoiding the punch, but De La Hoya has still been avoiding punches for a long time. Now that's a okay. You got a valid point there. You got a I valid just, point. I just think it's going to be different. It's going to be. It, it's not going to be easy. He let's see. That's fine. He might go in there and knock the hell out of him. That's fine too. I just want to see it. 
He he got knocked out by uh, let's see Shane Mosley on let's see September thirteenth two thousand three knocked out by Bernard Hopkins in two thousand four he got uh, let's see split decisioned by Mayweather in 07. and then he lost his last fight ever um, to Manny Pacquiao in let's see two thousand eight so you know I he he yes, won some games Hoya or he is, won some fights super but old you're right. I just, I just want to see Connor fight somebody who will fight him. Yeah, I don't care who that is. I don't. I really don't. And I, I if think it's the name of somebody I know, it's better than some MMA guy that I've never heard of before. Give, give me the Golden Boy and the Notorious, and I'm good with that. Um, ben said he said that, and he's 47. Uh, Michael said uh, it sounds like De La Hoya needs money, and he was pissed about Mayweather and Connor boxing for money and making it all about money. Like, yeah, probably. Like, anything that McGregor touches is going to turn to gold. It just is. I mean, it, you can hate it all you want to. You can hate McGregor. You can hate whoever. McGregor makes money. Like The people person are I want to see McGregor box is De La Hoya. Oh, it'd be great. I'd love that's to see that. That's the one I want because that's, that's somebody who's well past his boxing prime. So he might be just slow enough for Connor to catch a few times. But still going to actually stand there and, and throw blows with him. Oh, 100%. Like, obviously, these are both what fight, I would like, like That's what I would like to see if I could see that. These are both guys that throw punches. Yes. And that's what we want to see. At the I end just want to see him fight. I don't, yeah. don't want to see him get in the ring and have somebody run away from him for for 12 rounds, for an hour. No, so you that, got you that know, right. That's insane. No, I'm, I'm with you. I can't wait to see if Connor does Fight Island because I think it's going to be massive. I can't wait to see if he ends up doing this whole Oscar De La Hoya thing. Well, if he said, wants to do Connor Fight Island, he's going to do that. I mean, that's going to happen. He gets to, he gets what he wants. Yeah, McKin- uh, McKinnon said either way, uh, De La Hoya has way bigger stones than I do, regardless of age. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that you come yeah. out, you talk, you talk smack to McGregor, like that's that's big cojones. Uh, and then Michael said, I really don't care who wins. I hope they beat the shit out of each other. De La Hoya is just a hypocrite. Yeah, hundred percent he is. Hundred percent. That guy, that guy has caused more fight news. Over the past few years, than uh, than most fighters, and uh, I don't and know that I pay attention enough to know anything about him. He, I don't he know runs. He he's got Golden Boy Productions or promotions or whatever it's called. Um, and he, he's got guys. I don't, okay, I don't know. I don't know what well, the means. reason this became a big thing is because you know we had been talking about Manny Pacquiao against Conor McGregor. Uh, Pacquiao yeah. was with Golden Boy, uh, or was, and now he's with McGregor's agency. So, you know, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Either way. Uh, with us sitting at home, there are so many hypotheticals, and it is so much fun to discuss the what-ifs and whatnot. But as for today, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Unless there's something else that you feel like we need to hit, Chris. Nope, that's it. Not a that's damn all. thing. That's wonderful. You guys have been great. As always, thank you for jumping in on the comments. You guys have been fantastic. Share the show out. Tell you buddies. Uh, McKinnon jumps in last one. Dudes like that are why I speak softly and carry a stick that can reach out and touch someone from a ways away. 100%. Yeah, we do the same thing. Do the same thing. Michael said, thanks, fellas. We thank you as well. Share the show with your friends. Tell everybody you know about it. Make sure you are subscribed on the podcast and on all of the different live platforms. Whatever your podcast app is, we are on there. Make sure you subscribe. Leave a nice review on it. The live platforms, Twitch, Periscope, Facebook, and YouTube. And you can comment on there on any one of them as well. You guys have been fantastic. Again, as always, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.